So uh, we are looking at uh, consecutive values of residues modem of Piatesky Shapiro sequences. We've already said a few words about uh, about this question. Uh, the, um, indeed, you you can do something which is more general and uh, look at uh, values of automatic sequences, but we don't know how to do with all yet with all automatic sequences. So it is a certain variety automatic sequences which are called synchronizing automata. So for synchronizing automata, synchronizing automatic value works as well. Okay. So uh, what I do the following first, maybe maybe I tell you what, uh, what we are going to do because Otherwise, since you see always the same methods, you will see uh, he's always doing the same thing. I prefer to tell you what we are doing so that you don't have this idea, wrong idea. First, uh, we are going to look at uh, things which are essentially for what we are being doing, uh, to look at uh, uh, pairs of real numbers, of triples of the real number, which are equidistributed mod 1 at the same time. So there is a theory like that. I just say you a few words about that, and uh, essentially what is called Coxma sus uh, inequality, which is uh, multi. They, they did that independently and not exactly. What Sorry. What is the spelling? What is the second name? The second name is sus. S Z U S Z. It's uh, some uh, Hungarian uh, way to write something which is German, so it is a mixture of different things at the same time. Uh, S Z in uh, in Hungarian is S. Z S is J, like in Ruzsa. Okay, so Coxma inequality. Essentially, it is a multi-dimensional version of Erdős-Turán inequality. You will recognize it. But uh, since we are going to use it several times, better to do it like that. Then you remember, we said at some point that uh, it was possible to find very long set of consecutive elements which were all even. Uh, so this is what we, what we have to do. So very long. Let us say we can we'll call that blocks, blocks of two, in the sequence, get a Shapiro sequence, okay, or even numbers. So it is just mod two, or it is zero mod two, okay, not zero, yeah. whatever you wish. By the way, if it is constant, you have very long ones. It was the the contrary of being pairwise. Uh, that was coprime. You see, I told you this is something we can do with our bare hands because it was the same proof as. The, the one we were really interested in. But if you want to do extremely long blocks, there is a uh, different technology to apply. And this is what we are going to do. Now we have to do something about what is called k-uniform distribution. k-uniform distribution mod m. Of uh, for some k and k has to be less than c plus 1 of Piatesky Shapiro sequences. So we want to see is it possible when we look at block of consecutive elements in this Piatesky Shapiro sequence mod m, is it possible to find any block? And even what we would like to do, say that every block, each block occurs with the probability, with the density you expect. Okay? How far can we go? So this is what we are going to look at. Now we shall show that indeed it's not possible to find all the blocks. All the blocks do not occur. And even not that, but the blocks that occur are rather few. If you take all the blocks of length m, what the, the, the number of them is something which is only polynomial in m, whereas the total number of possible ones is something which is exponential. Because m to the k if you are taking blocks of length k. So it is just polynomial. So this is what we call polynomial con convexity. 
uh, con uh, complexity. And uh, indeed, the complexity cannot be too small neither. So complexity, lower bound for complexity. Number of blocks which occur, they are at most polynomial, but you have at least polynomial of them which occur. At least something of length h, there will be something like h square. Interesting because it means that it cannot be some automatic sequence or something like that. It is deterministic, but it cannot be automatic sequence because automatic sequence or morphic sequence will have an increase which is only linear in H. So it is a bit more complicated than that. And uh, well, possibly we'll stop there. We'll see how it is. Okay, if needed, I say a few words. So uh, I would like to say something now about the Coxma multi uh, dimensional I'm sorry I tried to survive with the with the board and so you see we have something so we take xn xn1 blah 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 xns this is a sequence of elements for so this is a, a sequence of elements in Rs. Okay. And what we would like to say is to count the number. So you take a interval, an interval in 0, 1, to the power s is just a product of interval. You can do that also for some other type of, uh, of um, subsets, but uh, they have to have some nice property to be Riemann integrable, to be something like that, if you want everything to work well. But uh, for the product of interval, it will be fine. And you can always manage with that, because essentially, the only object you, you can meet are objects which are limit of such a such a product. I know if you have some words for a project for a product of intervals in R N. Hmm? Cubes. Yeah okay cubes. In in French there are things you see when you make roads you have some stones which are like sort of cubes, pavé, and we use this word for, for this type of thing. Okay. So you have product of intervals, so let us say I is a product I1, blah, 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 the product IS, where the IS, I, uh, K, if you wish, yeah, okay, is a product, uh, is simply some interval, A, B, in, in 0, 1. Closed or open, the, 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 there is no difficulty about that. It will be the same thing if it is done for all the closed, it is done for all the open and so on. Okay, so uh, this is this uh, this interval, real interval. I mean, a less than b. Okay, there has some thickness, and what you are looking at is the number of n up to let us say capital N, such that the number so that uh, fractional part of Xn, is it okay if I write this? Let me say that what I call Xn, and then I will, fractional part of Xn is simply the set of the fractional part X1n, X11, blah, 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 Xns. Okay, the fractional part of the uh, uh, S tuple of real number is just the, uh, the S tuple of the fractional part. Okay? So such that Xn belongs to I. So you are taking this. What you expect that there is some good distribution and if there is some good distribution, well, you have a theory which is just a multi-dimensional theory of uh, Weil. And so you have also Weil criterion 
in multi-dimension, this is fine. And you have also some finite version of it, which is the equivalent of Erdős Turan. So what you expect, you have this number, the number of n such that xn oops, is in i. So what you expect is that this is equal to the length of i, take the proportion of them. So you take the proportion, what you expect if it is well distributed is that in i, the number of elements you have is the measure of i, which is just the product uh, b1 minus a1 times b2 minus a2 and so on. Hmm? Just the Lebesgue measure of this interval. This is not a, nothing really complicated. And then uh, I'm already stupid to write it that way, Bling. but I'll do that. Just I want to save some place. So such that fractional part of Xn is uh, lies in i. When I take that minus mu i, I want to have an upper bound. So in this upper bound, there will be some term. You'll see what it is. So it is absolute constant. You, you may give some constant. You may give everything for, for that. They are very explicit. The, uh, the, one, the formulation I am giving is not the best possible. You have better ones. But uh, for what we are doing, this is quite enough. So there is some first term. I write it what it is. Or maybe I write it right now. This is any k. So for any k, maybe larger than 2 or something like that. But uh, if it is 2, it's not that interesting. Because you just get an upper bound by uh, something which is bigger of 1. It's not wonderful. If you want to say something, better k is going to tend to infinity. Uh, 1 over k plus, and you remember how it was? There was something which was, let me, let me see how I write it. So you have something, if you remember, there was something which was 1 over h. And you were summing over h. You have 1 over h. And then you had something which was 1 over n the summation when n is up to n of some exponential. Okay? So exponential, we write e of u, which is exponential of 2 pi i u. Cannot make the economy of this. And then what you had, if you remember, in the one-dimensional case, it was some h, and it was h time xn. It is the same thing, except that it is multidimensional. So it is k times xn. Now I have to say I am summing over all the k such that the infinite norm is less than k. And of course, I don't want to take 0, 0, 0, 0, because this is the main term. In the Fourier expansion, the 0, 0, 0 will come here. This is the Fourier, the Fourier coefficient corresponding to 0, the integral of the function. Okay, So this is positive. Then you are taking also positive and negative k. You remember in the case of, uh, of uh, real numbers, it was possible to take only positive h. Because simply, you, when you go from h to minus h, then you just take the complex conjugate. And so it doesn't give something more. But here it's not true, because you have several of them. If you change all the signs, then it's fine. But uh, if you think the, 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 the sign of one of them, it doesn't work any longer. And then you have something which is 1 over h, which is 1 over r of k. And I have to tell you what it is. r of k is the product of uh, 1, uh, no, 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 is the product of I uh, wrote it that way, 1 plus Ks. K, yes, so K is not good, uh, L. L from 1 to S. OK, if you take S is equal to, to 1, then you have exactly uh, the to run inequality.
Fine. I try to keep that for later use. So what is R again? R, I, aha, I took it back. R is essentially one over, uh, no, R is the simply the product. Okay, so it is the product of the one plus K uh, L, L from one to S, and this you have to take in absolute value. Okay, it is the same thing as one over H in the one-dimensional case. So usually, what happens if you are in good case, and essentially we shall be in good case here, good cases here. What happens is that here you have something which is rather good. Rather good means that you are uh, exponential saving. This is something like n to the minus something n to the minus something permits you to take k to be something which is exponential. You see, summing of the that, this is peanut, this gives you a log. If you take the maximum of that, this gives you a log. So this is peanut. So essentially, if you have exponential saving here, up to k sufficiently large, and if you take k sufficiently large so that here you have also something which is slightly exponential, what it tells you is that the error term here is something it in which you have exponential saving. Okay? This is what it means, essentially. So it means that in good cases, I'll write it here. In good cases, You have something which is n up to n, uh, xn uh, is in i, this minus mu i, this is big O of n to the 1 minus delta. Okay? If you have an exponential saving, has well, to be more or less uniform in all k, which, is not, which are not too large then you are happy. You see, if you take a function which is something like n to the c, uh, it will be exactly what happens. So for all functions which have nice derivatives, then you have something like that. The delta may depend on c, but uh, you have some, something good. It's okay, I keep that because I want to see exactly what are good cases, and there are sometimes some trivially bad cases. So this is fine. Maybe we go to, we start to go to the business. Okay, detecting the value two. This one has to be multiplied by n, right? Either you divide everything by by n, and you have just n to the minus delta, or you want to count. Thank you very much. This is n times mu i. OK. So detecting the values of the residue Maybe I write it that way, if you, if you accept this, to say that this will be the residue of n to the c mod m. OK? This is the residue of n to the c mod m. OK. So I don't know if we ever saw that officially up to now, but uh, maybe. So one thing is how you detect n. So first point is that when you want to detect n, to say that u is congruent to a mod m, 
this is equivalent to saying that u over a, fractional part, u over m, belongs to a over m, a plus 1 over m. This is, this is the same thing. Okay, what you do is to say that this, you multiply everything, you say this is an integer plus something like that, which is between that and that, and when you multiply by m, you say this number is a multiple of m plus something which is between a and a plus 1, and it's exa exactly what you wish to say that it is congruent to a mod m. Okay? So this is a good point, is to see when you have a sequence like that, to say that looking at that is a really a question of fractional part. Okay? So now when you want to say a first application, let us say of that, it is the proposition, let C be in 1 infinity minus n, and m at least 2, otherwise it's not really interesting, then the sequence and C M this sequence is uniformly distributed modulo 2 it is a sequence of integers to say that it is uniformly distributed mod 2 for a sequence of integer it means that it is as often congruent to 0 mod 2 that it is congruent to 1 mod 2 maybe I don't need to write all this, uh, all this definition and you understand about what it means and so this is just a consequence, this is just trivial by Turan, uh, erdos turan inequality. You want to know how many times this is in this interval? Then you have to say, okay, it's exactly something like that in dimension 1 even. And so what you have to say is that you have to count this uh, k times u over m, but u is n to the c, so you have to find something which is k times n to the c divided by m, and as soon as k is not an integer, this is a very nice function, and you have exponential saving, and you have everything you wish. Okay? So not only this is true, but it's true with an error of m with exponential saving. I'm too quick? No, it's okay. Is it M, I didn't say what is M. M is uh, a residue which is at least two. Uh, a modulus which is at least two. And I am looking at the, ah, the, the sequence. Yeah, okay. So this sequence is uniformly uh, distributed mod two. That is to say that it is congruent to 0 mod 2 as often as congruent to so then this is ah yeah oh yeah yeah no okay I understand what you mean it is uniformly distributed mod m yeah okay thank you yeah okay and not only you have this uh, yes for the time being this is enough uh, you, you, you can say really much more okay so this is fine a uh, little exercise, which is interesting. Uh, what is the density, if it exists? It exists. What is the density, if it exists, of the set of n such that nc and m uh, 2nc are congruent to 0 mod 3. If you are thinking of integers, well, to say that n and 2n are, are divisible by 3, then as soon as n is divisible by 3, 2n is divisible by 3 and the other way around. So in any case, this is the only thing, and the density is one third. If you think that things are completely independent, then you would say, okay, this is one third of the time, this is one third of the time, 
and everything should be just probability 1 9 okay are we in one of those cases So you see, when you write to u, let u be a real number, you write to u is 2 times integral part of u plus 2 times fractional part of u. I just multiplied the trivial relation defining fractional part and the integral part. And this is, it depends, because it can be to u plus something which is really the fractional part of 2u if u is less than 2, one, uh, one half. Okay? And otherwise, it is 2u plus 1 plus the fractional part of 2u. This is in the case when u is at least one half. So in the first case, as, as soon as u is divisible by 3, then 2u is also divisible by 3. But in the case, and so this is the integral part, but if you are in the case when fractional part of u is larger than 1 half, then it tells you that this number is no longer divisible by 3, cannot be divisible by 3. So in some way, the sequence you are interested in, we are looking at n such that n to the c is divisible by 3 and the fractional part of n to the c is less than 1 half. This is exactly the n such that n to the c and 2n to the c are divisible by 3. There is a very nice little lemma I mean, it is a lemma, which is called little lemma. At least I call it little lemma. I'll let you prove it, but it's trivial but nice. Let x. You remember, this is something we had, something of the kind, to say that uh, one of them was here and the other one was in something different. But uh, this is the easiest case. x u, x u v, uh, real numbers, real numbers. 0 less than u less than v less than or even less than 1 and q and a integers q and a integers with 0 less than a less than q okay something like a residue but a good residue between 0 and 1 then you have the equivalence of first one fractional part of x is somewhere in uv and uh, x congruent to a mod q this typical the thing we have here except this is here and this is here okay and this is equivalent to x over q. We know that for this one, this is something about x over q. But then we have something about x. And uh, if you work a bit, you find out that this is in the interval 
a plus u over q, a plus v over q. You, you work a bit out and you find it. So it's nice. So it is just, you can uh, put those two conditions are only one condition. OK? So now what is the density of, uh, of the set you are interested in? You are saying that n to the c is congruent to 0 mod 3. That is to say that you are asking here to have q is 0 and a is something which is, q is 3, sorry, and a is 0. And then you say that you are in this interval. This is 0 and this is 1 half. So if you look at what you are interested in, it's to say that this is 0 over 3 plus 0. This is 0 over 3. And a plus v, a is 0, and v is 1 half. And 0 plus 1 half is 1 half. And you would divide by 3. This is 1 six. So what you are saying is that you are looking at x such so that or n to the c. So that n to the c divided by 3 is in an interval 0, 1 over 6. You can do this with bare hands, but it's a nice little lemma and it is useful to know it. So what is the density? Density is 1, 6. So this is really something that even if you have sequence which are, you see, no arithmetic property, as soon as you put something which are rational coefficients, you have to be careful. It's neither independent nor totally dependent. It's not one third, as in the when c is equal to 1. It's not one ninth if they were completely independent. So one has to be careful in some way. This is the type of thing that you may be misled saying, oh, oh I am in these things. Everything is independent. I'll show you that everything is not independent. OK. Uh, maybe I'll just go now to, to the, the thing I wanted to prove because, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Time is, time is running. By the way, uh, if, uh, if I cannot tell you today everything, I can go on tomorrow because it is somewhat connected topic. I prefer to have the things completely independent, but uh, for the last one, can permit some something and better to to tell you those things, even if there are. Okay, so now I I want you to, to go to the to the prop proposition we had. So let C now be in one infinity minus n. And m at least two. There exists. There exists a kappa, which is positive, and infinitely many n. It's no point to say infinitely many in the construction. It's clear that. They can only be infinitely many, but uh, if you have one, infinitely many n, such that for all h in 1 n to the kappa, you have n plus h to the c is congruent to 0 mod n. This was the even number you had. It's true also when you replace 0 by anything you wish. You can have very long blocks which are constant. OK? So this is what we had. I was telling you we can go up to n to the k. We were blocked at something like log n with our, you see, uh, miserable means. And uh, uh, okay, it was up to log n, and, uh, and it was uh, for c up to two. This is for any c. And this is definitely the the type of application of this uh, Erdős-Turan uh, business.
So how can you do that? Uh, let's set the proof. So you write n plus h to the c, and this is something you will see again and again and again. Uh, you expand by Taylor. So this is n to the c plus h time c n to the c minus 1 plus blah 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 plus something which is h to the uh, c integral part of c this coefficient you have a uh, binomial coefficient binomial coefficient the what is important is that the denominator is an is an integer if you want to write uh, I will erase it immediately maybe maybe not I can leave it here I can leave it here when I say what is x k this is what you expect to be x x minus 1 blah 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 x minus k plus 1 divided by k factorial okay so this can be defined whatever is x. Of course, you recover that if x is an integer, this is exactly the binomial coefficient. But otherwise, this is fine. OK, so you have this. And I'm not at the, at the end of it. You have this binomial coefficient. And then you have n to the c minus n uh, p -p 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 minus part plus something, which is an error term, which is a big O of h to the c plus 1 and to the c minus c minus 1. And this is an error term, because this is a small, a small exponent of n. And so this will be a, a peanut element as long as h to some power is less than an exponential of n. Okay? And this is why you can go rather far with h. So when h is rather uh, is rather far, you don't care. This will be peanut element. Okay. You have to be just a bit, a bit more. Well, pay attention that it doesn't uh, bother you for for the for the rest. But now what you say is this. So what you would like to do is to say I want this to be always even. One way to do that it is always even is to try to find only, uh, even, sorry, uh, congruent to 0 mod m. What you would like to have is to have elements which are just int integer congruent to 0 mod m. So you add the following, n plus h c over m is, then again you have something which is something which will be nice, which will be uh, n to the c divided by m. Is it what I want to write? No. n to the c plus, I write it here, the fractional part of n to the c over m. I will have to do a few times something of this kind, and so I tell you, remember what we have been doing, and I am not going to write it again, but it's good to write it once. Then this will be h time, and then you have something which will be c and c minus 1. This is important to write it here. So it is divided by m, and this will be the fractional part of c and c minus 1 divided by m plus blah, blah, blah. Okay. It's OK. I just I did the following. I, for this, you have different ways to do, because you can put that into this, and then to take the, h, the fractional part of h times that. But what I want is to be sure that I have some integer, which is a multiple of m. OK, so this is fine. And to have a control of that, independently of h. This is the point. So I have only finitely many terms. This goes to c. I have finitely many terms, and I want this to be a multiple, this number to be a multiple of m plus something small. Okay. 
So this is fine. What I do is that now I multiply by m. I multiply everything by m. Blah, 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 blah. Yes, here I do that. So here I have something which is m. m is fixed. So you have only m. m is fixed. 2, 3, 4, something like that. What is important? In n is tending to infinity. This will not be important. And h, you take it as large as you can. So now this is a number which is divisible by m. So what you would like to do is to manage so that this is something which is l less than 1. Because if it is less than 1, this will be really the fractional part of this number. And then you are done. This number, the integral part, is a multiple of n. So you want to have all this to be very small. So what you are doing, OK, the binomial, uh, can I, you know what we want to do. So what you try to do is to do the following. You want to say, OK, I want m, nc over m to be less than 1 third. Fine. Now I have this number. I want to have m cn to the c minus 1 over m. I want to have something that when I multiply it by h, I have it less than I don't know. You have a finite number of terms, 1 over c or something like that. Okay, Maybe I could have said 1 3 c, if you wish. Then I want to have this to be less than. I am looking at h up to capital H, and I see how far I can go with capital H. So this will be 1 over 3 times, I uh, don't know why I put 3. 3 doesn't mean any, anything any longer. C times H. When I am going to multiply it by H, I will get something which is at most 1 over C. Maybe 1 over 3 C, I don't know. These are no importance. Blah, blah, blah. Up to something. The last one will be, I should write it, because this is simply M times uh, the C becomes the C integral part of C. And then you have n to the c minus c. And then you have something divided by m. And you want this fractional part to be 1 divided by 3 uh, c h to the uh, fractional part of c. Because the power of h is increasing. So if you can do all that, then you are happy. So now you say, OK, I am looking at all those elements. And I want to have something which is in something of this kind, or in, a, in an interval here. You know what is this size? This size is something which is 1 over the power of h. So if you win something that is, if you win something here, which is better than the power of h, then you are happy. You have really an equivalent here, and so there exists some element. Okay. So the point is that you want to to go to h up to something like that. Now the question, and this is the thing which is of interest, is about this sum. Is it true that this sum is good enough that you have all the compensation? you expect. OK? So you look at the so form. Here you want to have 1 over 3c times h, h square or something else. You know, otherwise, if you multiply by this h number, it's going to exceed. When I multiply it by h, I have 1 over 3c. Yeah, so 1 over 3c is the sum, but the number of terms. Yeah, but the number of terms is c. The number of terms is c. So everything is less than one third. I mean, you you can you can uh, play with that. This is just a constant, but I mean, this one are okay. But uh, 
Okay, Th this is fine. So essentially, it tells that you have an interval here, which is of an exponential, which is a power of h. And if you are winning a power in n, then you are done. You can go with h up to the of n. So now the question is to know whether this works. What can you say about those things? So what you are going to look at is something which is is it, is it fine now you uh, I can I can erase this So the real question is to know what can I say about the sum n up to n of this summation and uh, so it is a summation of e to the so you have something which will be k0 n to the c there is a m there is some factor but essentially it is something like that okay it is a function which behaves up to a factor like this one and this will be enough for me plus k1 c and so to the c minus one don't care much this is not what is of interest and then you have k to the c n to the c minus c Okay, but you see that whatever happens, the k are not all zero. The k are not all zero, so one of them you take the the larger. Of course, if you have a function which is, what is the best? Maybe a smaller. The smaller it is, the best will be the cancellation. So if k c is different from zero, good. You take essentially this is function, and the the rest will be. Uh, no, the most difficult, the most difficult will be say, let us say, if k zero is different from zero, you have a function which is equivalent to n to the c, which behaves at infinity like n to the c, and so I have exponential cancellation. Maybe this is zero, but then I have say by this one, maybe this is zero. In any case, one of this is different from zero, and you have cancellation. Okay, so it's fine. You have exponential cancellation. And you have to write it a bit uh, a bit better, but th th there is no difficulty in that. Essentially, what you have to know, of course, what you have to know is uh, that uh, Van der Kooput tells you that you have exponential cancellation in this. This is Van der Kooput, which is needed. Okay, I think that uh, in May we we discussed about this type of things. Okay, so this is fine. We are done. We are very long. Uh, element segment which are even. This is what was around announced already some time ago, and now it's proved, and we're happy with that. Good. Ah, now we are looking at blocks, and we say, okay, if it is a block of elements, if we are congruent to, to if we are looking at uh, modulo two, we said the block zero 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 can occur quite often. What about uh, any block? So this is what we are trying to look is that it is some L uniformity, L uniform distribution of NC. Yes, modulo M. So this is sorry. I put this is three. So what we do is the following. Let us put the theorem. Let m larger than two, and b be a block. B one, blah blah blah. I take a block of length c. I show you why c is the best we can do for that. Take a block of length C in Z over MZ C, C plus 1. So I take a block of element, sequence of consecutive elements. Uh, Sorry? For 1 to C, you are right, it is like that. So maybe I should have said B0.
I don't know who's taking care of those notes, but uh, zero, B zero. <laughs> Everything is not written, but we can we can destroy it. I'm still here. By the way, I'm here for the two next weeks. So for uh, for for anybody who wants to to talk, I uh, can be in my in my office and um, okay. And B, I I have to state the what is the theorem. We have the following: one over x the number of n up to x for which n to the c mod m blah 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 n plus h n plus uh, c power c mod m then this block is equal to uh, b So what I'm saying is that the set I'm counting the number of elements up to n such that this block, the block of the uh, c plus 1 element starting with the integral part of c plus 1 element starting at n is equal to b. If things are well done, then how many b's you have? You have something which is m to the power c plus 1. Okay? And so what you expect is that this is tending, I am looking at the frequency, the frequency is indeed b to the minus c minus 1. Uh, m m to the minus c minus 1. Okay, they all occur with the same frequency. This is the L uniform distribution for L is equal to integral part of C. Okay. Uh, question, is it true for C plus 1 for the next step? Uh, I don't think so, but I don't know how to prove it. It is not true if C, if we take, if we reply, place C by something sufficiently large, it's not true. This is the next uh, section. But is it true? Is it the last one for which it is exactly true? I don't know. I think so, but... Uh, can you repeat? Yes, yes. It's the most important is what is not proved and not what is proved. <laughs> you are right. <laughs> what I say is that I think that see if I write this with an L instead of fraction, uh, the integral part of C, then I can formulate the same thing. And the question is, is it possible to do that to have the same result if I replace C by C plus 1? I think, so, I think it is not the case. I don't know how to prove it. I can... Can we show infinitude? It's not the density. Can we show the infinitely many n for which uh, the block occurs? No, we'll, we, we'll, see, we'll see something even worse later on. But not, not for just L plus 1. Even, even, for, even for that, is it true that, you are right to, to phrase the question that way, is it true that all the blocks occur, of the blocks of, se of length C plus 1 occur, or C plus 2 occur? Uh, no idea. If it is much larger than that, yes, it's, Yes, it uh, yes it doesn't work. <laughs> okay. So again, you you, you see what we, what we are saying is the following. What we want to have is not exactly the same thing as we had before, because now before we were, you see, forcing ourselves to say I want to have n to the c n plus one to the c in given places. Now I say, the places are given, what can I do with that? And we'll see that it is something more difficult. So what we are looking at is we want to say that, proof, let us say, this condition the fact that this block is the block B, this is equivalent 
2, and again you have n to the c over m is lies in b0 over m, b0 plus 1 over m. This is to say that the first one is the b0, the second one n plus uh, c, no, n plus what I, I uh, n plus 1, blah, 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 uh, go to the end, and this is n plus c to the c divided by m. This is fractional part belongs to the last one, which is b c over m, b c plus 1 over m. Previously, I was asking them to be in short range or something like that. No, now I am asking for large range. Okay? So this is exactly equivalent. So again, I say, haha, I want to count the number of elements. Let us go to this. Okay? So let us go to this. And again, I think this I can, uh, I can erase now because definitely what I want to count is the number of n such that we have this, this localization. This is exactly to say that the sequence of the, the block starting with n of the consecutive element in the piatescu shapiro sequence are exactly the b0 and so on bc which are given. So I can erase that. And we know that we are what we are doing, so I'm erasing that. Good. Okay, so I say now this is fine. If I want to have something like that, especially if, you are, if I, I'm looking for equi equidistribution, then I can use this, the multidimensional Erdős-Turán, the Coxmar-Schuss uh, result. So essentially what I need to have, I know that is this, this is simple, this is 1 over m to the c plus 1, it's what I expect, of course, this is fine, and simply I have to have something which is not, to, not that small, by the way, just to win a tiny bit. Okay. So, of course I'm losing here, but uh, essentially I have to look at this. What can I say with that? You see, if you have k which is large enough, you're happy. So you, you need not go very far in k. k is something which is in some way bounded. And this will be enough for you. Because you are looking in a, a cube which has very large volume. Volume is a constant. So definitely you, you need not go very far on that. But what can you say for that? So what you have to say is something which is exponential, what you have in the exponential, this is the only thing I write, is exponential of k0 n to the c plus k1 n plus 1 to the c. It is over m, forget about the over m, plus every, everybody is over m, so you don't get it. This, this is not a, a major problem plus blah 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 plus k to the c and plus c to the c okay and again Taylor Taylor you say this is exponential what is in the exponential you have something which is n to the c it will be k0 plus k1, forget, uh, well, plus k1, plus blah, 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 plus kc, and to the c. Okay? Then when you look at the, at the first derivative, you will have something will be plus, uh, k0 does not exist, but you have 1 times k1, plus 2 times k2, plus blah, 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 plus c times kc, n to the c minus 1. 
Okay? And then you have something which will be plus blah 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 plus k1 plus 4k2 plus blah 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 plus c square k to the c c c minus 1 over 2 n to the c minus 2 okay plus blah 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 n to the c minus c you, you recognize you have some van der Monde uh, determinant okay matrix by the way this is 0 to the 0 this is 1 to the 0 and this is c to the 0 if you like to write it that way this is the power 1 this is 0 to the 1 this is 1 to the 1 and this is 2 to the 1 uh, yeah and so on and this is 2 to the 2 and this is 1 to the 2 and this is 0 to the 2 and this is c to the 2 and then you have different powers just because you expand this is quite classical good uh, and then you have something which is plus something which is n to the c minus c minus 1 and this is just your ordinary peanut this tends to 0 okay and even k, uh, k is uh, just a something bounded and you're happy so now the point is to know what happens with that well what happens with that if your if the sum of the k is different from zero you are happy you have this term and this term is dominating and you have cancellation in your exponential sum okay and then you go okay if the sum is equal to zero ah then maybe this one is different from zero okay if this one is different from zero yet then you are happy because you have something which is n to the c minus one it still turns round and you have cancellation in your exponential sum and then you can go up to this one up to the last one it will be fine now is it possible so if one of those is different from zero you are you are happy you take the largest with the largest exponent and this will be the dominating term and you have a function which behaves like this uh, like uh, n to the c minus something and something which is not too large and you are happy you have cancellation in the business question is it possible that all of them are equal to zero answer is no because van der Mond determinant is a uh, van der Mond matrix is uh, invertible van der Mond determinant is different from zero so it's not possible to have them and so you are happy hmm? this is yeah yeah, this is, this is why in some way you stop at C. But look at what happens if you are taking uh, one more. So let us take one more. Let us assume that C, let us say, is between 2 and 3. And I try to take, then I can go to uh, n to the C, plus n plus 1 to the C, plus n plus 2 to the C. This is fine, plus n plus 3 to the C. Then what do you get? you get something which is n to the c so it will give you the k0 plus k1 plus k2 plus k3 then you will have k1 plus 2k2 plus 3k3 then you will have something which is what uh, k1 plus 4k2 plus 9k3 and uh, then you will have something which is k1 plus uh, 8k2 plus uh, what 27k3 or something like that okay but uh, then uh, if you take no it's not going no this one is not good because this one will be to the n to the c minus 3 and this is already in the peanut business so the thing which are not in the peanuts business are n to the c n to the c minus 1 and to the c minus 2 c minus 3 will be in the peanut business so you have this yeah but there are k1 k, k0 k1 k2 k3 for which this is equal to uh, all are equal to 0 a priori you have something with four terms no you have three four four terms and uh, and three equation it should be like that and if you recognize what they are by the way, a solution for that is to take, I think, 1 minus 3 
3 minus 1. You recognize the binomial coefficient. And this, it will work also. It will give you 0, and this will give you 0. And by the way, it means exactly that the polynomial n to the c is really a polynomial. It remembers that it is a polynomial of degree less than 3. Because you have between its derivative and itself this relation. So it may be that looking at this relation may be a way to tackle the fact that some blocks do not occur. Okay? This may be a possibility to see that some blocks do, do, not, do not occur. I don't know whether it will be enough just for the, for the first term. But, uh. So, okay, so for blocks of length up to capital C plus 1, consecutive blocks or length from 0 to n to the C, uh, of length capital C plus 1, it's fine in, this, in the piatisky shapiro sequence. Everybody can be represented and occurs with the nice density you expect. Of course, to say that something do not occur, it's not enough to say it does not occur like that, and we have the, OK, it's more or less. You know that it is more or less necessary and sufficient, because this is rather close to the um, uh, Weil criterion. It's a finite form of Weil criterion. So if, uh, if it doesn't work, there are risks that things are not well distributed. It doesn't mean that from time to time it cannot occur. OK, so now we are going to, the, to move to the next step. Next step seems sound very interesting. OK. So what we want to do is to look at long blocks up to h and to say how many blocks do occur. And what I want to, not exactly to show you, but to let you guess that the number of such blocks is polynomial. OK, we, we have a proof. By the way, I should say that uh, this was something up to that place. It is something that was done jointly with uh, Michael Dormota, who is in Vienna. Dormota, Dormota, Dormota. The name from Czech origin. You know, in Czech, R is a vowel. Uh, you know, in the Serbian languages, you have also something like that. You have, this is an island. Kirk. Kirk Island is an island. OK. Well, so Michael Dormota, uh, um, Clemens Mulner. Lukas Spiegelhofer, and uh, in what uh, what comes now also there are more things uh, I am not explaining everything, but Andre Shubin has also joined us in this project. What is fire now? No? No, four. 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 Polynomial complexity. I don't give you a complete proof, but I've shown you the nice argument which is behind. And uh, all the things we are sweating. I don't show you, but it is in the preprint I can give you with the greatest pleasure. Would it be only to correct the English? OK. So. Uh, Uh, 
Okay, let me let me state the theorem. Then I will Okay, so we have we are looking at and C is as usual something which is in one infinity minus n. There's something which is true we know for any H C. We have that for any M. M let us say is at least two for the residues. If you prefer to take values of some automatic uh, nicely automatic sequence, synchronizing automatic sequence, then it works too. And uh, what we are looking at is the following uh, H is given. So when H is large enough, uh, when H is large enough, then we have the following, the number of blocks n to the c n plus 1 to the c the integral part blah 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 n plus h to the c or h plus h minus 1 but this has at that level no importance so the number of such blocks which really occur when you look at any n for all the n you look at all the blocks that occur the number of blocks like that is big O of h to some power. K will depend on C. So the number of blocks is something which is like like h to the c, so you don't have all the blocks. The number of blocks is something which is exponential, possible blocks, and what you get is something which is only um, polynomial. Sorry? Yeah, whatever. K is something which exists. So there exists K uh, and this. There exists K of C. Maybe after M. But before H. Before H. Hmm? Yeah, but M, here M is given before putting the kappa. So M is inside that. And if you want to add something, you can put also that it is a power of M. M is fixed, but in any case, this is not M to something. It is not a, yeah. It is not M to the H. M to the H is not something uh, which is, which is uh, uh, only in M. It's not a big O of M. The, the, the real variable for us is the number here. And this number is something polynomial. Fine? OK. So I think I am going to show you a very simple problem. So simple thing is to take c is equal to 2 but this is not uh, this is not where is the the simplification i will tell you where i put a simplification at least to show you where we start to have something polynomial but it's not the end so okay uh, hint it's not a proof hint of proof c is equal to 2 Oh, blah 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 you know how it is 
Sorry? C cannot be 2. C? C cannot be 2. C cannot be 2. No, you are right. C cannot be 2. So C can be in, zero, in 1, 2. Thank you. So Neil, you notice that when you see C is equal to 2, you don't, uh, you don't copy it now. OK. C is in 1, 2. But this is, not, this is just because there will be less terms to, uh, to deal with. It is not, uh, it is not where the, the situation. Uh, so of course, when you write n plus h to the C, now you are used to that. And you say that this is n to the c plus c times n to the c minus 1 plus something h plus something which is a big O of uh, h n to the c minus 2, h2. Okay? In what we are doing, h is fixed. So I will write pH this polynomial, Pn of H. Well, usually it is a polynomial with more terms. It's not linear polynomial, but I am not going to use the fact that it is linear in H. Not going to use that. For the different values of H, I have it. So this is in somewhat general, plus something n c minus 2. Okay. So what we are going to prove is the following. We wish to prove that proposition uniformly in M and H. So even for M, I am going here to give you something. We have this following. If I am taking all the values Pn, I am looking at the sequence Pn of 0, Pn of 1, integral part, blah, 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 Pn which are the consecutive values, more or less. Pn of h minus 1, if I want to take just h term, you can go, you can take more terms, there's not a problem. So I take at all these blocks, and what I am saying is that this is big O, so it is absolute big O, of m square h to the 6. And for this statement, I can really write it also for more elements here. I can write it in general. What is the problem? Why isn't it exactly what we wanted? Well, not far from what we wish. Not far at all. The problem is here. This is dreadful. Because the integral part is not exactly the integral part of that, is not exactly the integral part of that. It may depend on something we were used to forget about that. But it is a big difference considering the integral part of that and the integral part of that. Okay, because you'll see there's something which is more uniform here uh, that you don't have here. We don't know exactly what it is, although we have good upper bounds. But uh, so this is a real problem. Thirty-six. I have possibly the time to explain you how to prove this. 
there's one one ID behind that and only one so if you want to say that what is pn of h writing it as pn of h its fractional part plus its integral part plus its fractional part and its fractional part you have two things you have n to the c you are used to that plus c times h to the n to the c minus 1 but the fractional part of the sum of two elements is the sum of the fractional part so you can as well put the h outside this is not a problem here if you prefer just for the same reason the fractional part the, the fractional part of a sum is not the sum of the fractional part there may be some carryover and here we are not cheating about the carryover we are really taking care in this in this we are taking care of the carryover if this sum is not zero otherwise this would be really just a too, 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 too easy but uh, okay so now you say that P and H is some congruence to UH mod M and then you are used to that now mod M this is equivalent to say that the fractional part of this business blah 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 exactly what is here over M is belongs to UM UH over M UH plus 1 over M UH plus 1 over M this is always our favorite trick how to say that something is congruent to UH mod M and this is what we want to have is to say that we want to have some UH like that we want to see which are the UH we can go okay so now this well what are the values of the of the U, UH in some way so we consider the following intervals m x square intervals if you have uh, something uh, more terms you take a higher power but this is always a power you have here this is i1 blah 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 m h square minus 1 over m h square this is i m h square just interval of length you cover the interval between 0 and h2 by interval of length exactly 1 over m So now what can I say about the set of pairs for H in what we are interested in 0 H minus 1 and each I in the interval 1 to M H square the set of pairs x0 x1 in r square I write it and then you understand what it is such that x0 plus h x1 is in a1 is a strip in R2 defined by two parallel lines
Yeah? No? Parallel lines. A minus 1 over M. No things. Less than x0 plus x1h. Less than A over M. If I said that x0 plus x, x1 is in this interval, this is, uh, you understand that if I have in more dimension, then I have add, add th things here, but I don't care about at h, it will be always something linear in the x i's. This is interesting. Okay? So now for different, I don't think I need that any longer. The the set the set of the real numbers x zero and x i one such that they are in i one is given in ah is a strip defined by uh, is it a, is it i one uh, should I, this is in i i sorry. This is the interval. X0 plus H a, a, a X1. This, when this is belongs to this interval, then I say it is just defined by some strips. Okay? Now, for different values... of h in 0 h minus 1. This is when h is given. If I am different values of h, I will have different h i. OK? So we are separating for uh, we are separating r2 by a family of h times m h square hyperplanes in, 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 in lines if you prefer in R2 if we were uh, with more dimension it would be something with hyperplanes now if you are in a cell this is the point which is important, that if you are in a cell, then you know exactly what is the P0 to the M and so on. So this is the first point you have to think of. It is 4.45. You have to think of it up to, up to tomorrow. We can start from that tomorrow. But what is really now the point which is important is that when you are having something like a certain number of hyperplanes, or straight lines in R2, how many cells do you have? If you are in a cell, the value of the Pn0, the block Pn0, Pn, and so on, Pnh, will be given. Because you know exactly where you are in this set of length at most 1, one over m. So the point is to know how many cells do you have. If you have one line, you define the plane into two parts. If you have two lines, you separate the plane into four lines, into four cells. If you have three lines, how many do you, do you have? This is where we are winning. If it were eight, it would be a mess. We win nothing. The point is that the number of cells, we want this number of cells to be polynomial in H and not to be something m to the H. If it is m to the H, we are, we are lost. Or H to the, uh, if it is, yeah, H to the, no, m to the H, we are, we are lost. 
do whatever you wish. You have at most one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Huh. It's not eight. Okay? And there is a nice result which tells you that if you are doing that in the number of cells you have at most is I will come back to, to, to that uh, tomorrow. I will start with that because it is quite interesting result. Number of cells is at most very, very precise 1 plus MH3. The MH3 is what you have here. Plus MH3 times MH3 minus 1 over 2, the uh, sum of binomial element. And this is where you stop the dimension. And you may check that uh, this gives you exactly 7 in the case you have uh, three lines. Okay, this is, this is a good point. But this is what? This is just at most something like uh, what? M, uh, M2, M2, uh, H6. Okay? So this is why the number of blocks you have is at most the number of cells you have here. And this number of cells is polynomial in H, and so the number of blocks is polynomial in H. Now this is just forgetting about this big O of H square n to the C minus 2. And this is terrible. And this I won't tell you anything about that. At least what I wanted to show you is the question of, you see, the number of cells, if you are cutting with hyperplanes, is something that grows polynomially with the number of, um, of hyperplanes and not exponentially. OK, 49, it's time to stop. So tomorrow we'll. Uh, I, I'll say a, a, a few words again on that because, and then uh, I'll go back to the to the end. What of is the cell? Is the, the, hmm? the set of lines and what is the number of connected components? Or what? Yeah. Uh, no, no, just uh, when you are when you are cutting, you see you have cells like that, yeah. and then you have cells like that, and then and so it is each time you have some yeah, uh, so some place where you don't cross, which is just defined by uh, intersection of the uh, thing like that, and you are not crossing any other. Okay.